Taylor here with AgriSpray Drones. One of the biggest questions we get asked all the time is how do you operate a sprayer drone legally? And mainly a big sprayer drone legally, such as the Agris T30 or Agris T40. Well, let's look at two different areas of licensing. Um, that would be on the federal level, the FAA, and the state level, so the uh, pesticide bureau in your state. So on the FAA level, the federal level, there's five things the FAA needs uh, in order to operate a large sprayer drone legally. So if your drone is over 55 pounds, it is considered a large drone, which the T30 and T40 are. So those five things are a 107, a 137, a 44807, the drone's in number, so registered in number for the drone, and a class two medical certificate. And we'll dive into those more detailed a bit later. Now on the state level, the state level is pretty straightforward, but it does depend on which state you're in. So typically uh, it just requires that you have the proper pesticide applicators licensing. In some states, this could just be a regular commercial applicators license. In other states, it's that plus an aerial applicators license. We recommend to contact your pesticide bureau um, or uh, agriculture department uh, in your state and just ask them what you need to aerial apply licensing wise uh, in that state. So once you pass those tests, and there, there are tests, you have to know about chemical and things like that. Once you pass those tests, then your state will also require that you have insurance, so drift coverage. Um, and liability uh, coverage. So we, we partner with a couple of different um, insurance providers, uh, one primarily um, who uh, we fully support because he knows a lot about the industry. And he can provide the insurance that you need for each given state. Uh, and then after that, some states also do require that you register with their Department of Transportation your drone. So they need their drones in number as well. Okay, so now that the state's out of the way, let's take a deeper dive into the federal side. So on the federal side, the 107, that is your drone pilot's license, essentially. It's a 60 question multiple choice test. We provide all of our customers uh, with a free uh, study guide for that and practice exams for that. It's actually online based, uh, video format, all that kind of stuff. Um, so once you, you know, ace the practice quizzes, you'll ace the actual 60 question test. That has to be taken at a, at a facility. And there's usually one within a couple hours of everybody. All right, now next, let's jump into the class two medical certificate. That is just a physical. So an AME, uh, a doctor who's certified as an AME, can perform this physical. It's a lot of eyesight, so uh, make sure you have, um, you know, if you have good vision or you can wear glasses, um, then you'll pass it essentially. If you are worried you might not pass it, you can apply for a waiver. We have information about how to do that as well. Okay, lastly is drone registration um, for the simple part of the FAA side anyways. Drone registration, uh, so that is an in number on a large drone. We provide you with a link uh, to essentially lock in an in number, buy an in number, and then you can uh, attach it to that, that drone serial number uh, and link those two together. Uh, or you can also just send a letter in uh, along with the drone's information to the FAA and they'll provide you with an in number. That part's uh, very simple. So those three things, 107, class two med, and the in number, those can all be done with just in a matter of uh, you know, two or three weeks, essentially. It's not a long process. Now, what is a long process is the 107, or excuse me, the 137 and the 44807. So the 137 is your aerial applicator's exemption, and the 44807 is your heavyweight drone exemption. So a drone of 55 pounds, and that is model specific. Now, these two exemptions are entity level. So just the company that, that uh, owns the drones or the company uh, that is, it is performing the applications um, has to have these exemptions. Uh, you can also have, a, have an exemption that a contractor can operate under as well. So these are uh, umbrella essentially or, or company-wide uh, exemptions. So the 137 and the 4507 are petitions, which means that you, you have to send off a stack of papers about this big to the FAA that has all, all your manuals and your petitions and all sorts of stuff. And then they approve you um, there. 
And then from there, you then go to your, uh, your FISDO and your local FA officer and contact them. Usually there's one within a few hours, everybody, and they will work to get a date for a pre-application meeting and then an inspection flight where they watch you fly the drone, they ask you a few questions about chemical, and then you're good to go. Now that process there can take uh, about probably nine months, maybe even up to a year. And right now it just depends. The FAA is swamped right now. Now, we, to make this simple, we offer two things. So we have a regulations consultant and she essentially does these exemptions for you. Um, she, she writes these, these exemptions for you. She answers all the questions you might have. She goes through the pet petitions for you. She sends everything to the FAA for you and she answers the FAA's questions. So she gets the exemptions approved basically 100% for you or on your behalf. And then from there, you just have to contact your FISDO, your local FAA officer. So that's step one. That's the first thing you should do. Just go ahead and start that process. It's going to take nine months to a year. Hopefully it's shorter, but we'll see. So what do you do in the meantime? You buy a drone today, you want to operate within a month legally. Well, we also offer a bridge program uh, that is essentially, like I said, it is an entity that you can operate underneath of as a contract operator. So this entity is the Walkway Foundation. They have a program called Pharmatude. So it's the Pharmatude program. This is a nonprofit organization out of Arizona. And what Pharmatude does is Pharmatude's goal is to get youth involved in agriculture through technology. So they work with schools, they work with um, uh, trade schools and high schools uh, with students to get them more involved in agriculture, utilizing drones, things like that. So they have these exemptions. They have a 137 and 44807. And they have a program that allows these students to operate under these exemptions. So we contacted them and we partnered with them. And what we're doing is we're helping them raise money. And in turn, they're allowing our customers to operate under these exemptions. So essentially you get tested by Pharmatude and once you pass, which you will pass, uh, then you provide them with inf information and then you get to operate as a contract operator, uh, a Pharmatude contract operator. Now, all the billing has to go through Pharmatude. So if you're doing custom application, all the billing has to go through Pharmatude. Uh, that's just how it has to work legally. They bill the customer directly and they collect the money for you. They keep 12 and percent and they pay you the rest. Um, so you can operate under that program legally until you get your own exemption. And then if you choose to, you can hop off of the Pharmatude program and operate under your own exemption. I know that's a lot of information, but we'll break it down as simply as possible uh, for you, step-by-step step for all of our customers. Let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.